Welcome everyone, my name's Sylph, and this is my attempt to beat a hardcore Nuzlocke of Pokemon Leaf Green with only Bug-type Pokemon. The full rule set for this run is listed down below, but put simply, only the first Bug-type encounter in each route or area can be caught. If a Pokemon faints, it must be permanently boxed. No items except held items in battle. Party Pokemon levels are limited to the next Gym Leader or Elite Four's Ace. And finally, the battle mode must be put on set at all times. Now, obviously, the bug type is known as being among the weakest overall types in the Pokemon franchise, and I'm afraid the selection in Fire Red and Leaf Green does not help with this reputation, with only six fully evolved bug Pokemon being available between the two games. Since we'll be playing Leaf Green version, this is going to make Scyther impossible to get as it's a Fire Red exclusive meaning we only have five total possible encounters. I have no idea what to expect with this run, or if it's even possible, so let's give it a try. Just before we get into the run, I have a huge announcement. We have a new merch line dropping as of today. Exclusive Challenge Runner and Hardcore Nuzlocker shirts and sweaters so you can represent the way you play Pokemon. All proceeds go back into the channel to fund new projects, so if you're in the market for some new gear and want to support the channel, this is a great way. Check out the merch box beneath the video or the link in the description and get yours today. Feel free to tag me on Twitter or use hashtag SilphSquadMerch once yours arrives for a shoutout. Without any further ado, let's get into the run. We start our journey off by naming our rival since Oak has forgotten his own grandson's name. No wonder he's such a terrible person. And I tried to name him Algorithm since we of course want to battle the YouTube algorithm, but it doesn't quite fit. I guess we'll just go with Blue instead. But you guys can take on the algorithm by dropping a like on this video and leaving a comment anyway. Going downstairs to visit our mom, she immediately says, Right, all boys leave home someday. I, what? Mom, I was just coming downstairs to say good morning. Leave my house forever, you little sh**. Traumatized and all alone, I take solace in our creepy old man neighbor, Professor Oak, who ends up giving us a Pokemon for our journey. I decide to take Bulbasaur so that our rival chooses Charmander because why not make this challenge even harder, right? I nickname our Bulbasaur Burbopolis, I don't know why, it, it just works. And we smash our rival's Fire Lizard to the ground with our Plant Toad. Seems legit to me. Now, as much as I love Bulbasaur, he's of course not a bug type, so we're gonna have to travel to Route 2, just north of Viridian, for our first viable encounter, which ends up being a Caterpie. I successfully catch one and nickname it Rorschach, and Rorschach ends up having a sassy nature, which means plus special defense and minus speed. Minus speed on a future Butterfree is really not good, but hopefully we can EV train it enough in speed to offset that. After depositing our stinky grass frog in someone's PC, that poor someone, it's time to try and train up our Caterpillar. Almost immediately, this becomes very troublesome, as even the Pokemon on Route 1 outspeed us, so we often can't escape. And there's no way we have enough power to take something out that's higher than level 2. After grinding almost exclusively against level 2 Rattatas for a while, Rorschach finally hits level 7, where she evolves into a Metapod, which is definitely helpful for a more defensive presence. With that, I'm feeling safer to hit up Viridian Forest, where we can find a second encounter, Weedle. We catch one and nickname it Makita, and Makita has a naughty nature, which means plus attack and minus special defense. Plus attack is fantastic, but we'll definitely have to look out for psychic and fire moves due to that minus special defense. With the benefit of switch training and some trainer battles along the way, Weedle quickly evolves into Kakuna at level 7. Now this is one of the benefits of bug Pokemon, they tend to evolve really early on, as a little more grinding brings Makita to level 10, where she evolves into a Beedrill and learns Fury Attack too. Not far behind is Metapod, who also evolves at level 10 into a Butterfree and learns Confusion, a move that might be a savior early on. Now those of you who are even remotely familiar with Pokemon know that we have a massive challenge coming up, and I know I need to prepare. I decide to stay just north of Viridian Forest for a while to train up our Pokemon Speed EVs and especially Rorschachs. As it turns out, Butterfree has the exact same speed stat as Onix, yes, Onix is that quick, and Brock's Pokemon will almost certainly have better speed IVs than ours, so we have to hope that this will be enough. Shortly after this, I travel to Route 22 west of Vermilion since there are Mankeys there which give attack EVs which are perfect for Makita. A ton of grinding later and both our Pokemon end up reaching the level cap of 14 where Butterfree also learns Stun Spore. With that, it's time for the Pewter City Gym. As a Rock-type gym, this place is terrifying. Not only is Beedrill weak to Rock, but Butterfree is actually four times weak to Rock on top of that. Yikes. Thankfully, the only gym trainer has no rock moves on his Pokemon, and Confusion being a special move really helps us too, as both his Geodude and Sandshrew are two-hit KOs. It's time for Brock himself. The one good thing about this battle is that Brock leads off with a Geodude that also doesn't have rock moves, so I have a bit of a plan here. I go for Stun Spore immediately to help us out, and his tackle doesn't do much on us. 
Since we have the opportunity, I now decide to start loading up on Hardens to raise our defense as much as possible. Between Paralysis and our defense increasing rapidly, we're able to get max defense and take him out with most of our health still. In comes the big threat, Onyx, which does have a rock move. The key is for us to get the Stun Spore off, and we do thanks to our Compound Eyes ability which increases accuracy, but he breaks through nonetheless to hit us with 4 times super effective Stab Rock Tomb, but our Hardens paid off as it hits us for about 15 HP damage, but our speed is lowered. This is the key though, since Onyx is paralyzed we still outspeed and can now hit him with Confusion which does just over half. And then, he misses his Rock Tomb so we can use Confusion again, bringing him to the red. But then he hits one to bring us to just 8 HP. Way too close for comfort. I'm worried we won't outspeed after two speed drops now, but thankfully we do and can take him out. That was a close one. One major challenge down and a badge to show for it. On our way out of Pewter City, one of Oak's assistants gives us the running shoes as a gift from our mom, and the attached letter says, Dear Sylph, here is a pair of running shoes for my beloved challenger. Remember, I'll always cheer for you. Don't ever give up. Man, all jokes aside, it's so sad that Red eventually abandons her and doesn't speak to her for years. On the next route, Route 3, we can actually pick up a hidden Orin Berry, which might not seem like a big deal, but berries are very hard to come by in this damn game. Mountain Moon is upon us, and immediately beside the entrance, we can get the Bullet CTM, which is going to become incredibly useful in 3, 2, 1. On the first basement floor, we actually have a 100% chance of finding a new bug type encounter, Paris, which is a thing. Probably one of the least used Gen 1 Pokemon of all time, but we're gonna roll with it, okay? We successfully catch one and nickname it Hilton, and Hilton has a quirky nature, which is neutral. Pretty good for a future Parasect, actually, since its bug typing is physical and its grass typing is special. The bottom floor of Mount Moon has something absolutely crucial for us, the Thief TM, and you'll see why later in the run. With Mount Moon behind us, we have a scary rival battle ahead just before the Nugget Bridge, but after getting to a sufficient level, I think I have a plan for how his team stands currently at least. He leads with a Pidgeotto, which is super effective against our entire team, and I decide to lead with Rorschach. One of the scarier things about this battle is that he tends to spam Sand Attack here, but not only does Butterfree have Compound Eyes, but we also outspeed so I can hit him with the Sleep Powder right off the bat. From there, we take it down with a few confusions, and he sends in Charmander, and we use the same strategy against it, although it woke up in the red, but just used Growl. Nice, Blue. Nice. Despite resisting confusion, his Abra has nothing but Teleport, and his Rattata merely went for Tail Whip, followed by Quick Attack instead of Hyper Fang. An easy battle, all things considered, but I'm definitely not writing him off for the future, as that team is going to get scary once it outspeeds us and gets new members. Since we leveled up so much for Blue's battle, we're forced to hit up the Cerulean Gym now, and Hilton handles the trainers really well with Bullet Seed, although Icicle Spear Shelders are no laughing matter. Gym Leader Misty is almost always a terrifying threat, as having a Starmie so early on is just brutal, but I think I have a plan. She leads with Staryu, and I lead with our trusty Rorschach. Surprisingly, the Staryu still outspeeds us despite us being 3 levels higher and having a ton of speed EVs, guess that's what a sassy nature will get ya, and Water Pulse does a small chunk and thankfully doesn't confuse so we can hit it with Sleep Powder. Confusion looked like it would be a 2 hit KO, but it just barely survives on 1 HP and then Misty super potions it, but thankfully it stayed asleep until we could KO it. In comes the big threat Starmie, and it hits us with Water Pulse right off the bat to exactly half, then we hit it with Stun Spore. Now we can't do any damage with Butterfree out there, so I have to switch, and I was hoping the Paralysis would allow us to do so safely, but Hilton gets hit by Water Pulse immediately, but we do resist it and no confusion either. From here I use Bullet Seed, which does surprisingly little per hit, although we got a 5 hit attack right off the bat. Nice. She then goes for Swift to bring us low, but since she's paralyzed we can outspeed, and we only hit 3 times and she lives on 1 HP yet again and uses Recover, and we only hit twice the next time, followed by another Recover. It's a rough stall, but eventually a crit on one of our hits allows us to pull it off. Never thought I'd see a Paris be so useful to be honest. After the Nugget Bridge near Bill's Cottage, we encounter this couple, and the girl tells us this is a famous dating spot, and the guy says, are you here alone? If you're out at Cerulean's Cape, well, it should be as a couple. Well, you want a date, man? Hey, what the f***? Once I'm done ransacking these people's house trying to find the Dig TM, it turns out this Rocket Grunt had already done so. Whoops. Give me that. On Route 6, I... Ooh, a Citrus Berry. <laughs> Noticing our levels are getting a little high for the level cap at level 24, I avoid as many trainers as possible and arrive in Vermilion City, the location of our next gym battle. 
First, we've got to get the Cut HM from the SSN, and on board we encounter a man who says, Shh, I'm a global police agent. I'm on the trail of Team Rocket. They're up to nothing good. Hold on, Looker, is that you? I think this might be his first appearance in the series. While scavenging for food in the chef's kitchen trash cans, we find a cherry berry which is going to be very useful for our gym battle. After finding the rest and Brick Break TMs on board, we have another rival battle. With all of our Pokémon at level 23, we're cutting it close, but we're able to employ a similar strategy as last time, although this time I used a Harden on Rorschach to help it out with Raticate later on. His Pidgeotto did hit us with one gust before being taken down, and he now has a Charmeleon which did stay asleep thankfully, and his Raticate hit us with Hyper Fang down to 29 HP before we could then put his Kadabra to sleep and switch into Makita for the KO with Twin Needle. His team is steadily growing scarier, that's for sure. Hey, what's this dude up to? Aw, oh, aw, oh, shit. <laughs> Before the Vermilion Gym, Hilton ends up evolving right at the level cap at level 24 into a beautiful Parasect, which should actually be helpful as we make our way through this gym. No, I'm serious. Not only does she resist electric moves, but we can also teach her the Dig TM as well. Having just scraped by under the level cap, it's time for the third gym leader, Lieutenant Surge. For this battle, I decide to attach our Cherry Berry to Hilton to avoid paralysis on at least one occasion. He leads with a Voltorb, and I lead with Hilton. He hits us with Sonic Boom for 20 HP, and then we can hit him with Dig for an instant one-hit KO. Parasect is OP, man. In comes Pikachu, and it went for Double Team before we went underground. It then went for Double Team again, and I was scared we wouldn't hit it, but Parasect doesn't give a f and takes him down as well. Raichu's up next, and it also goes for Double Team, and this time we do indeed miss. He then uses two more, and I'm like, oh god, please stop, and we miss another Dig. He refuses to stop double teaming, and we refuse to stop missing turn after turn. With him at max evasion, we finally hit one, but Static ends up paralyzing us, but our Cherry Berry helps out. Now, knowing he'd likely potion, I went for Leech Life so we could get some health back and put him within Dig KO range, but we of course miss it. He then uses Thunder Wave to paralyze us, and we can't move on the next turn, after which he hits us with Shock Wave for 11 HP since we resist. Paralyzed, and with him at max evasion, I'm doubtful we can hit a two-turn dig, but I try it, and we do, but he stays in the red, and we get hit to 15 HP over the next two turns. We're within crit range, so I'm forced to switch, so I go into Makita, who gets hit for a third by Shock Wave on the switch. He then hits us again, but we land a Twin Needle to take him out. Whew. That was getting very scary, especially since Rorschach is weak to electric and was our only switch option left after Makita. Three badges down. Now that we can access Route 9 to the east of Cerulean, we can pick up the Aerial Ace TM, which could be useful for a couple different Pokémon, so I'm going to hold on to it for now. While traversing through Rock Tunnel, Parasect learns Spore, which is a 100% accuracy sleep move, so I'm excited about that. After passing through Lavender Town, we can access the Route 12 gate, where we can get an incredible TM. Return which can get up to 102 power with Max Friendship. We arrive in Celadon City shortly thereafter, and naturally, it's time to hit the slots. I mean, what else is there to do in this city besides creepily stare into a gym and have tea with old ladies in the condominiums? Now, we do need a lot of coins for what we want to buy, and despite getting a few jackpots and starting to learn how to time our hits, it's going to take way too long, so I decide to sell as many items as I can so we can buy enough coins. Now, the weird thing about Leaf Green is that Pinsir is available for 2,500 coins, while the Fire Red equivalent exclusive Scyther costs 5,500. Serves Fire Red players right for getting Swords Dance on Scyther really early via level up, I guess. We spend our life savings on Pinsir and nickname it Rampage. Rampage has a hasty nature, plus speed and minus defense. Plus speed is fantastic, and minus defense is alright, just have to watch out for flying types for sure. Now here, I decided to get the Fly HM, and I remembered to avoid the double battle right outside the gate on the way in, but then accidentally ran into it on the way out. What an idiot. These two trainers have none other than a Ninetales and a Rapidash against our bug team. Miraculously, we held on and made it through Deathless, but man, is that ever a scary one. Wanting to get Pinsir a little more battle ready, I decided to teach him the Brick Break TM we got since we can also get it from the department store anyway. It's time for a tea break with the guards. Ah, uh, what a day. It's a hot one out there today, huh? Did you hear about the new president of Kanto? Apparently he wants to ban Pokeball imports from Johto. What an idiot. Who would ever vote for that guy? Alright, enough small talk, it's time to do something cool. In the rock tunnel north of Lavender Town, there's a boy here who serves as a move tutor, and he can teach Rock Slide to one singular Pokémon. Since Pinsir can learn it, I figure it's perfect for coverage against flying and fire types, and this is the only way he can get the move, so it's quite amazing. 
Now that the guards are happy with us, we can also access Saffron City where Mr. Psychic lives, and since the only other Pokemon that we'll have that can learn it gets it by level up anyway, I decide to instantly teach it to Rorschach. With that, it's time for the Celadon Gym. As a Grass-type gym with a team of Bug-types, I'm not feeling too worried for this one. Erica is the gym leader here, and she leads with a Victory Bell as I send out Rampage. I go for Vice Grip right off the bat for about a third, and then she hits us with Stun Spore to paralyze. A couple more Vice Grips are able to do the job though, as we're brought to about two-thirds or so. She sends in Tangela next, and I decide to switch into Makita now that we can use Super Effective Twin Needle against it, but it barely survives in the red. A few more attacks take her out following a Hyper Potion she used, and in comes Vileplume. Now Beedrill can't do much damage against this thing at all, so I switch into Rorschach, but we get hit by Stun Spore on the switch. Nonetheless, I push on with Psychic, which does over half, and we get brought to below half before we can take her out with another. With worse paralysis luck, that could have gotten a bit scary, but our type advantage definitely made that manageable. For winning, we also get the Giga Drain TM, which is going to be really useful for us. The Rocket Hideout in Celadon brings us the Black Glasses item to power up dark moves, and we also almost lost Makita to a self-destruct from a coughing, being brought to the red from full health. Goodness gracious. Our first battle with Papa Giovanni occurs down here, and since he leads with an Onyx, I go in with Hilton so we can instantly KO it with 4 times effective Bullet Seed. The same goes for his Rhyhorn who sent in next, although he survived the first one on the Sliver, used Scary Face to drop our speed, and then outsped us and used Tail Whip. That puts us in a terrible position for his Kangaskhan, so I'm forced to switch into Rampage who tanks a Mega Punch with just above half. We can then outspeed with super effective Brick Break, and amazingly he just goes for Tail Whip on the next turn so we can take it out. A crit from there would have definitely KO'd us, but we had solid coverage against his team. Thank god we decided on Brick Break. Once we pick up the Sylph Scope, we can return to Lavender Town to make our way through the Pokemon Tower. In here, our good old buddy Blue is mourning for his Raticate we mercilessly murdered on the SSN, and this time we're gonna take his... <laughs> I said take his life, I mean make his life even more miserable with a secret weapon, Rampage. So long as we don't miss Rock Slide on his Pidgeotto, we're pretty well set, and we don't so we can take it out. He next sends in Charmeleon, and we do miss our first Rock Slide, and he hits us with super effective Stab Ember, but no burn so we can take him out on the next turn. He now sends out an Execute, so it's a perfect chance to switch in Hilton, who avoids the Hypnosis, and we can hit him with a 4 times effective Leech Life for the KO. Next he sends in Kadabra, and this is why we didn't want to send in Makita here due to his Psychic weakness, although Kadabra just went for Disable and it didn't work, so we could one-hit KO him as well. His final Pokemon is Gyarados, and I go for Spore here after tanking a Thrash so that I can pivot into Rampage again for the Rock Slide KO. Amazing stuff, our team really dealt with him quite effectively. At the tower's peak, we re-kill Cubone's mother, and hey, at least she doesn't have to go far to bury herself, am I right? And before any of you say, oh Sylph, that's terrible. We've had our team members die to that damn thing in previous runs, so f*** you and Marowak. Mr. Fuji says, I came to calm the spirit of Cubone's mother. I think Marowak's spirit has finally left us. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> With the Poke Flute in hand, it's time to wake up the damn Snorlaxes and open up the region a bit for us. Oh god, I don't think he liked the music! With our path now unblocked, we can access Route 12, which grants us our fifth and final encounter for this run, Venonad. We successfully catch one and nickname it Perp. Original, I know. And it ends up having a rash nature plus special attack and minus special defense, which is pretty great, but again, we'll have to watch out for psychic moves. In the hellhole maze that is Route 13, we run into this sign that says, Look, look, look to the left of that post. I am literally surrounded on all sides by posts. What do you mean? After grinding like absolute crazy, since there's a big jump in the level cap here, we arrive in Fuchsia City. Interesting fact about this place, in Fire Red and Leaf Green after you beat the champion, Koga's daughter Janine actually shows up here before she later became the gym leader, and she says that she's training to use poison Pokemon as well as her father. A cool little easter egg of sorts. The Safari Zone brings us some goodies such as the Sunny Day TM and the Quick Claw, as well as the Surf HM of course. While we're on this whole item bonanza, I also remembered to return to the game corner to pick up the Miracle Seed to boost Parasect's grass moves now that we have enough money, and I taught the Thief TM we got to Beedrill so we can get a whole host of valuable type boosting items. They're all a 5% chance to get off of certain Pokemon in the wild, which themselves can be quite rare, so this took a long time to get them. Hence why I was live tweeting my quest for them. But we eventually got the Sharp Beak from Wild Firo on Route 18, the Twisted Spoon from Abra, and the Hardstone from Onyx in Rock 
Rock Tunnel. Interestingly, right beside Fuchsia City, this karate couple actually have black belts on their Pokemon to raise the power of fighting moves so you can steal them right off their Pokemon. Poor people. But sorry, I, I need it. While grinding, Venonat eventually hits level 31 and evolves into Venomoth, which should be a great help for the Fuchsia Gym. Now this gym is interesting since we do have the same level cap for both it and the Saffron Gym, so we have to go in slightly underleveled. Initially, I was planning on skipping this dude since he has a hugely powerful Hypno, but somehow he saw me from all the way up there, causing the screen to shift entirely. Bruh, you're too close. Rorschach gets the job done, though. Gym Leader Koga is an interesting threat for us as we do have lots of ways to resist poison, but he's always troublesome no matter what due to the strategies that he uses. He leads with a coughing, and I send in Perp to go for the Psybeam right away, which is a one-hit KO. A solid start. Muck comes out next, and I decide to paralyze him with Stun Spore right off the bat to prevent him from minimizing, but he does nonetheless. He just doesn't give a shit. Now, I chose Venomoth not just for the poison resistance, but also because Minimize wouldn't have as much of an effect thanks to Compound Eyes, and it works pretty well, although we got crit by a sludge since he broke through both Paralysis and Confusion. Thankfully, after a Hyper Potion, he finally hit himself in Confusion, though, with us below half. In comes another Coughing next, who's a one-hit with Psybeam as well, and Weezing sent out as his last Pokémon. I decide to go for one Psybeam, which does a huge amount, then Sludge hits us to the red. Not knowing if he'd potion from that range, I decide to switch to play it safe, and he hits Rorschach hard and poisons her, but we can outspeed on the next turn to KO him with Psychic. Definitely a messy and dangerous battle, but Compound Eyes seems to have pulled us through. It's time to win back my very own building, the Sylphco, and conveniently one of my employees appear to have left their bulk up TM on the ground while escaping, so... meh, it's free real estate. Realizing we're not quite leveled up enough for our next blue battle, I decide to go grind a bit and get EVs on Route 5 in particular, which is fantastic for physical sweepers, exclusively giving attack and speed EVs. I also take on the Fighting Dojo for good XP and lots of attack EVs too, which Makita is perfect for since he four times resists fighting. After beating the Dojo Master, this guy says, Our master is a pro fighter, be prepared to lose! Man, Sabrina must have really messed with this guy's head. The battle I've been fearing is here, with Blue now having some crazy evolutions, but I theorycrafted for a while and thought of a pretty good strategy. He starts with his now fully evolved Pidgeot, and I lead with Rampage. Rock Slide is a one-hit KO, and now I figure we'll bait out the Charizard with a pure bug type, and we do, we just need Rock Slide to hit, and it does thankfully, taking him out with four times effectiveness. If Rock Slide missed, that would have been the end of Rampage, so it's a big gamble. In comes Execute, and I switch in Makita, but we get paralyzed on the switch and then can't move, getting hit hard by Confusion before we can take him out. Now, I know Alakazam is going to come out here, but he only has Future Sight on it right now, so I know I can stay in and hopefully get a Twin Needle off, and we do for the one-hit KO. This way, we can also take the Intimidate from Gyarados with Makita, so then we can switch in Rampage for the Rock Slide one-hit KO with the Hardstone attached. Again, his team is getting harder to deal with as we go on, but Alakazam only having Future Sight was key here. Upon getting gifted a Lapras for... well, I don't know why, this guy won't stop bragging about it. Lapras simp. Giovanni's battle here is interesting, as we lead off with Parasect against his Nidorino, and we're not able to one-hit KO it with Dig, so he hit us with a crit below half before we KO'd him. Rhyhorn was then an easy KO with Bullet Seed, and then I forgot that he has a Nido Queen here instead of Onyx, so I switch in Perp, who gets her defense drop, before Psybeam brings her to the red with a crit, and then we can KO her on the next turn. Kangaskhan comes out, and I go for our Pinsir Strat now with the Black Belt to boost Brick Break, and thankfully he just used Rage followed by Mega Punch, so it's an easy KO with two attacks. For saving my own company, this guy says, Because I am rich, I can give you anything. Can I get like a, a house or something? Uh, oh, okay, uh, a ball. That works too, I guess. I decide to teach Pinsir both the Bulk Up TM and the Strength HM afterward, because I'm thinking I might save Return for Beedrill at the moment. Now, Sabrina's gym is a terrifying one, as her Alakazam could quite literally sweep our entire team if we're not careful. However, I've had this battle in my mind the whole time, and have been EV training Rampage in speed like crazy, which I'm hoping is enough despite the 35 base speed discrepancy. Due to her team's physical weaknesses, we're able to take down her Kadabra in one hit with Strength, her Venomoth in one hit with Hardstone boosted Rock Slide, and her Mr. Mime with Rock Slide too, which I was hoping if it didn't kill, it would at least flinch so she couldn't get up Barrier. As it turns out, we do indeed outspeed her Alakazam, but Rock Slide just barely doesn't KO, and it doesn't flinch either, but she just goes for Calm Mind. Not wanting to miss, and knowing she'll Hyper Potion, I go for Strength this time, and amazingly enough, it just KOs. Interesting. Even if she used Psychic instead of Calm Mind, we would have survived besides a crit, so I think that went pretty well. 
Fast forward past the Cinnabar Mansion and we reach the Cinnabar Gym, one of our scariest challenges yet. A fire team against a bug team with all of our members being weak to all of Blaine's. Wait a minute, Tombstoney? What the f***? The theory crafting for Blaine's battle was insane and I was just not seeing a single way to beat him, never mind not lose a single Pokemon. Hardstone Pinsir with Rock Slide seems like a great idea, especially since its Hyper Cutter ability would cancel out Growlithe and Arcanine's Intimidate, but my calcs tell me Arcanine still wouldn't get KO'd by it, meaning we'd be KO'd by Fire Blast, and that's assuming we don't miss a Rock Slide at all. But eventually, while desperately sifting through my TMs, I saw that Rorschach can actually learn Rain Dance, so I formed a strategy around it. Let's cross our fingers. Blaine kicks off the battle with Growlithe, and I send in Rorschach. I use Rain Dance right away, after which Growlithe hits a Fire Blast, but it does less than half thanks to the rain. From here, I can now use Stun Spore to paralyze it, and it stays paralyzed. I switch into Rampage here, and he's unable to move again, and now I can go for Bulk Up to raise our attack. Growlithe lands a Fire Blast though, but it does less than half. Now that we're set up correctly, we have to hope we can land Rock Slides, and we do on Growlithe, followed by Ponyta, then Rapidash goes down as well, and Arcanine's Intimidate gets cancelled out, and now with the Bulk Up boost, Rock Slide connects and does enough to take him out. Incredible. We basically set up the rain so that Pinsir could survive Growlithe's Fire Blast, and then Bulk Up so it's enough to take down the Arcanine. I think that was the only possible way to emerge through that battle deathless, and we even had enough room to get hit by another Fire Blast by Growlithe if he didn't get paralyzed. Wow. While training for the 8th gym, Rampage tries to learn Swords Dance by level up at level 49, and it took a long time to decide, but ultimately I stuck with Bulk Up. The defense raise is valuable and could potentially give us the bulk needed to set up in the first place, and his attack is already so high. I also decide to teach the Giga Drain TM to Venomoth since Parasect will learn it by level up eventually anyway, and with that, it's time for our 8th and final gym battle against Giovanni. He leads off with Rhyhorn, and I start with our trusty Hilton for the Bullet Seed, which KOs immediately with the Miracle Seed boost. He then sends out his second, more powerful Rhyhorn, which suffers the same fate in two attacks after landing one scary face on us. Nidoqueen then comes out next and hits us with Body Slam, and hilariously enough, it got paralyzed by our effects for ability when Body Slam is supposed to be the thing with the chance to paralyze. Too good. From there, a couple of super effective digs are able to do the trick. Nido King comes out next and hits us with Thrash, after which I hit it with Spore to put it to sleep. Dig would be a very dangerous idea since it has Earthquake, so I switch into Venomoth as Giovanni uses a full heal to heal the sleep. Interesting, I don't even know if I knew he had that. Psybeam just barely doesn't KO him even with the Twisted Spoon boost and he hits us hard to blow half with Earthquake before healing, but our next Psybeam gets a crit to take him down. His final Pokemon is Dugtrio and I play it safe by switching into Rorschach to predict the Earthquake, which he indeed did go for, and a couple of Psychics are able to do the job since he can only hit us with Slash. 8 badges down and Giovanni also gives us the Earthquake TM for winning. That's a perfect TM to teach Pinsir, and while grinding up for our next rival battle on Route 22, Venomoth learns Psychic, and Parasect learns Giga Drain, three great power-ups overall. Now thankfully for this next blue battle, we can kind of overlevel slightly since the next cap is the Elite Fours. His Pidgeot is a one-hit with Rock Slide, then he sends out Rhyhorn, who we can now take out with Earthquake. His Charizard follows, and is another one-hit with Rock Slide, and then he brings out Execute. This time I decide to stay in and go for Strength, but he survives and lands a Stun Spore. Not great, but we KO him with another attack. In comes Alakazam now, and since we're paralyzed, we get out sped, but he just goes for Calm Mind and Earthquake as a one-hit KO. If we had gotten paralyzed there, I'm pretty sure we were a clean sweep with Psychic after that special attack boost. Amazing how just one turn can make all of the difference in a run. His Gyarados is then taken down by two Rock Slides, only getting off one Hydro Pump on us in the process. Just in case we need them, I decide to pick up the Soft Sand from Wild Sand Slashes and the Poison Barb from Wild Arbucks on Route 23 now that we can access it, along with the Silver Powder from Venomoths in the Berry Forest on Three Island. I also end up teaching Beedrill Brick Break and return to Pinsir and fulfill the rest of our EVs too. It's time for the Elite Four. Starting off is Lorelei, the Ice-type Elite Four member. I decide to lead with Makita with the Black Belt against her Dugong, and Brick Break just barely doesn't KO before she then uses Safeguard and gets full restored before another two hits takes her down. Slowbro comes out next, and we can use Twin Needle here for super effectiveness, and it brings her below half before she just uses Amnesia, so another attack takes her down. What can I say, Makita has a tool for every circumstance. Not sponsored. Cloyster comes out next and gets hammered below half by Brick Break before using Hail, and another hit is a KO. Jinx is next, but thankfully has no psychic moves, weirdly enough, and it turns out we outspeed anyway and can one-hit KO her with super effective Stab Twin Needle. 
Lapras is her final Pokemon, and quite a darn bulky one, as Brick Break brings her just below half, and then she has this with Confuse Ray before her Citrus Berry activates. Hail damage combined with Confusion damage and a Surf or Ice Beam would decimate us, but I know the Hail will end on this turn, so I decide to risk it, and we hit ourselves in Confusion, doing way more damage than I thought, and then she goes for Body Slam, and we survive on just 15 HP, but the Hail does indeed end. Holy, that was close. I switch into Rampage here, who tanks Ice Beam relatively well and can get the KO with Rock Slide. A scary moment for sure, but a manageable battle. Next up is Bruno, the fighting type trainer. I decide to lead with Perp with the Twisted Spoon attached to boost Psychic as he leads with Onyx. Here we can go for an easy KO with 4 times effective Giga Drain, a great start. In comes Hitmonchan next and Psychic is able to KO him in one hit thanks to a crit, although I think that would have KO'd anyway. Machamp comes in next and I know it has super effective Rock Tomb, but I go for it nonetheless and he survives in the red amazingly enough and uses Scary Face to lower our speed, but then after his Citrus Berry he just goes for 4 times resisted Cross Chop instead before we can take him down. That is an incredibly weird AI choice. Hitmonlee comes in next and thanks to our speed drop hits us hard with a Mega Kick before we can hit him with Psychic but he survives in the red. I'm forced to switch into Hilton here, and Mega Kick does over a third, but I go for Giga Drain for a bit of recovery. Eventually, Hitmonlee starts overpowering our recovery though, so I switch into Rorschach who gets hit below half with Mega Kick, but I know that we can outspeed, so I take him down with a Psychic. His final Pokemon is an Onix, and this is a bad position to be in for a bug and flying type, so I switch in Rampage and accidentally clicked Return here, but then can just use Earthquake as intended to take him down. That was a bit scarier than I thought it was going to be, but we had some great pivoting towards the end. The third Elite Four member is Agatha, the Ghost-type trainer who, let's be real, is more of a Poison-type trainer than anything. Now Venomoth is a great lead here for us, not only for Psychic, but also because she resists Poison as well, and her double teams won't be as effective with our ability. She leads with Gengar, and surprisingly enough, we actually outspeed it and one-hit KO it with Psychic. Incredible. The same goes for her Golbat, and her Haunter, and her second Gengar, and Arbok as well. Harp is unreal. Between Double Team, Toxic, Confuse Ray, Mean Look, Curse, Hypnosis, Dream Eater, Nightmare, etc., Agatha's battle is usually, well, a nightmare, but that was smooth. The final Elite Four member is Lance, the Dragon Trainer. His team is definitely scary for ours, but I have a bit of a plan. He leads with Gyarados, and I lead with Rampage, who is unaffected by Intimidate thanks to Hypercutter. Now the most his Gyarados can do is Hyper Beam us, so I go for Bulk Up to raise up our attack and defense right off the bat. He just goes for Bite, and then we miss our first Rock Slide and get hit by Dragon Rage. Not good, but our Rock Slide then takes him out. He sends in Aerodactyl now, the thing I was fearing, but I know our attack and defense are high enough no matter if he outspeeds, and we end up outspeeding and taking it down with Hardstone boosted Rock Slide. His Dragonite then comes out and we hit it with Rock Slide, but it barely survives, but just goes for Safeguard before getting full restored. Our next Rock Slide also brings it to a sliver, but then we can safely go for Return for the KO. With the bulk up, his two Dragonairs are then also KOs with Return. What can I say, Rampage went on an absolute rampage there. It's time for the champion, our very own rival, Blue. Throughout the whole game, his team has been growing stronger until this point where I am terrified. It is a very scary looking team for us, with 4 out of 6 Pokemon having super effective moves against all of our team. He leads with Pidgeot, and I lead with our trusty Rampage. Let's bring it home, baby. We outspeed with Rock Slide, but this time it doesn't KO. Uh-oh. We get hit hard with Aerial Ace to below half, and our next Rock Slide misses. Are you kidding me? This is disastrous. There's nothing else I can switch into on an Aerial Ace. I just have to go for it. And it does even less, but gets the flinch. I can then go for a safe return to finish him off. Unbelievable. Both sides getting some good luck there. In comes Rhydon, and I know we can't KO with Brick Break, so I send in Hilton, who gets hit way below half with Rock Tomb. Ouch. Our speed then gets dropped, and I sincerely thought we'd tank it better than that, or that he'd go for a scary face, but nope. I can't switch anyone in on a Rock Tomb, and I doubt we outspeed now, but I have to go for the Giga Drain, and nope. He KOs Hilton with Rock Tomb. This is not looking good at all. I send in Perp here, though, who's able to instantly KO it with four times effective Giga Drain. This baits in the Alakazam though, but I have to stay in, and thankfully he goes for Future Sight so we can then land a Sleep Powder. I then switch in Rampage preemptively since I know we'll need him out there for when Charizard is switched in and Return is a one-hit KO. In comes Charizard and we take the Future Sight attack all the way to 24 HP and I am desperately praying we can hit the Rock Slide, and we do, thank god. 
Executor is up next, and I switch into Makita since he has no psychic moves, and Twin Needle is a 4 times effective 1 hit KO, although it was surprisingly close. His final Pokemon is Gyarados, and now I can't send in Pinsir at all for Rock Slide, and Makita has been intimidated. This is a rough position to be in, but ultimately I decide to switch into Perp who gets hit by Dragon Rage. I then hit him with the Sleep Powder successfully, and from here I go for Giga Drain for some recovery, then Psychic for about a third, Psychic again down to a quarter, and then he wakes up and hits us with Dragon Rage, followed by a full restore from Blue. Thankfully I can tag him with another Sleep Powder though, and he wakes up right away and brings us to 61 HP. Another Psychic brings him low into the red, but then he goes for Thrash to take Perp out. From here, I can switch in our very own starter, Rorschach, to take him down with one more attack. Damn, that was a scary battle. Parasect was definitely a misplay, or miscalculation rather, and that miss on Pidgeot really threw off any momentum we hoped to have, but hey, we managed it. We beat a Pokemon Leaf Green Hardcore Nuzlocke using only Bug types, and it was a surprisingly good team in the end. Lots of credit to Bug types for sure. If you enjoyed the run, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button as it really does help a lot and grows our community. A huge thanks to our YouTube members and patrons who make these videos possible. If you'd like to support and get your name up here, the links are also down below. If you enjoyed, drop a like down below to help the video out and leave a comment letting me know what kind of run we should do next, and I'll see you guys for our next challenge video.